We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. With Maxwell Silverham. We are nothing sacred. With cruise control. We are nothing sacred. Sacred. Oh, yes, bitches. Uh Nothing sacred. (laughs) Yes, this is the Nothing Sacred interview. And I am Maxwell Silverhammer. And I am Cruise Control. And with us, we have Curtis Kelly, who you guys might remember from 2018, who was on with us, who was a Watts Mafia Crip gang member, and now has since changed his life around, got involved in a lot of different things, and he wanted to come back on and kind of keep us updated. Curtis, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? Man, so, so... just give them a little background for those new or those who forgot uh, who you are and kind of what you've done and, and that kind of thing in the past. Okay. Well, my name is Curtis Kelly, um, a.k.a. Yusuf Allah. I'm changing my name. I'm Muslim, so I'm changing my name to a much more meaningful, um, something with some substance to it. However, uh, back in 98, I was on the video interview with um, streetgangs.com standing on the corner of uh, Century and Main Street in LA doing an interview about gangs out there and so I represented my hood watched my from Crip and spoke on some things that I noticed that was going on around the city during that time and when I actually went back for a second interview with them guys everything that I spoke on then in 98 took place so by the time I got back, it was already like in motion. <laughs> it was very yeah. wow. So I mean, yeah. when you say in motion, what as far as like what like what was it? So I spoke on um, them selling houses and renting to um, Spanish people, which is fine. Like, you know, everybody needs and deserves housing, but at the time, there were no houses being sold or displayed in English at all. Like. Oh. They didn't want us to buy or be in the market. Mm. And once they did that, they bought all the houses back from the uh, Spanish people and started redeveloping the neighborhood. So now Watts is almost the inner city. Like, I mean, it's the inner city, but it's like developing into, it's being gentrified. So that's something that I spoke on then. And I noticed it and I was really young. And when I went back, I was like, oh, my God, they did exactly what I said they was going to do. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. Man. So that's uh, and explain so what, a little, explain okay. a little what, if anybody doesn't know what gentrification means. Basically, uh, I think they may, uh, give us a little idea of what, what you mean by that. OK, well, gentrification, from my understanding, comes from when one demographic of people are relocated and another demographic moves in um, with mm-hmm. more opportunities. They, they redevelop the, the, uh, the areas around them. They make more jobs, but they put everybody else that was there out and leave them just hanging. So to me, that's what I understand gentrification to be. Hmm. It's interesting. It's like trying to manipulate the market a little bit. Yeah. Racially or, or by class or something. Huh? Yeah. 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 So basically, here's the here's a definition just for everybody. The process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving mm-hmm. housing and attracting new businesses, typically displacing current inhabitants in the mm-hmm. process. So basically what you said. So, um, yeah. but yeah, that's that's uh, that's happened a lot of places. But they what, but how they did that was they they got you said they, they sold it to Spanish speaking people, then bought them back the houses back. Yeah. Like, OK. Um, naturally, uh, um, Mexicans or Spanish people, they're, they're horticultural, you know, they, 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 they're good with plants and landscaping mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So they, they themselves, when they, they buy property, they'll build on it. They'll put grass in it. They'll put the leaves, uh, they'll cut, like everything. Uh, they'll bring the property value up. Okay. So once that is done, we come through and sweep them out the way and take back over because now the value of the property is much higher now. It looks better. It's prettier over here. We got mm-hmm. rid of all, all the other people, the vandals or whatever is, you know, the case that that is what happens. So they, they use them to clean it 
and then come behind them and take it. Interesting. So it's kind of like a, a stepping stone or tool. Sort of. Yeah. Well, what, what they'll probably do is they'll probably go, hey, your house looks great. We'll sell it to you for a really, 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 we'll sell it from you from a really, really, really good price. Mm hmm. And then they've got it back, but it's but they didn't have to put the work in in terms of actually improving the property. Absolutely. So it actually costs less for them to get the house back than it would have for them to take the house over originally and redo the property. Right. But then they'll take the, the other the surrounding areas, mm -hmm. knock down old buildings, make new shops, not shopping plazas. Like we have a Ross in, in Watts now. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a, like a big giant grocery store. This is in one of the roughest areas. I'm sorry. This is in one of the roughest areas in Watts. Wow. Right there by um, Jordan Downs. They tore wow. down the projects, rebuilt them, sent everybody out to Victorville, and they just redeveloped the whole area. So even if they don't buy those houses back from the Mexicans, they still bring the property value up and everybody else will start moving in. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It's a means to an end kind of thing. So yeah. that's crazy. So, so what, uh, what made you get out, finally say, Hey man, enough of this gang stuff, man, this isn't working. Well, um, a couple of things happened in my life. Um, the number one thing that happened, my brother was murdered, saving my life due to gang banging. Hmm. And, uh, I had a daughter too at that time. Um, I actually joined a gang so I could try to hustle and make some fast money, you know, mm -hmm. to take right. care of my baby. And she was a motivation. Uh, God taught me how to braid her hair and gave me a gift of doing hair. Like, I'm so surprised at my, my skills myself. I, it humbles me. And I just decided, you know what? If I can give myself fully to the streets like this, why can't I do it the other way and be positive and just go all in on that? Hmm. Wow. That's, prob that's, I mean. that's probably a miss, a miss, a miss, uh, misinformation about a lot of people in that, that, you know, in, in gangs who get involved with that. Everyone thinks it's always, oh, they don't have a family and they're all in it for the, you know, the sides or whatever, or drugs and stuff like that. And obviously mm -hmm. sometimes it's just, you know, an easy way to get some cash so you can take care of your, the people that are around you. Right. Um, now, if you look at it like this, and this is not to bring up any topic of race like that, but I needed to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I needed to be seen, understood, acknowledged. That's the word. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have many opportunities in our neighborhoods to progress, to be more positive, to be more active or proactive in the community or society, we don't have those opportunities. So we make them for each other. Uh -huh. And that was an opportunity for me. It wasn't like me going to fill out an application at a job. And, you know, I got to go through the interview process. And, you know, if I'm hired, I'm hired. It's something like that, but it's in the street level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, we got to go through some things. But... You got to go, but they're different than a, than a, a, a job interview at a, at, a, at, a, at a Ross or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. But I mean, the thing is, we, we, we're basically all out here on a mission to survive. Hmm. You know, yeah. that's, oh. that's the ultimate goal. And by me, by God giving me the mind and the idea to want to change, it, it gives me the opportunity to help others that do also want to, that may not have a voice or don't know how to say, look, I want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Well, I remember last time you were on, you told us that your mom didn't even know you gang banged until she saw the video on street TV. Yeah, that was, um, that was my stepmother, my, my, my stepmom and that side of my family and my dad, I think my dad had an idea. I believe he knew. He just didn't say anything. Um, he and I understood l lately. My sister told me that he actually protected me in that neighborhood. He told everybody, I don't care if you, who you are, where you from. That's my son. I'll put your hands on it. And I just found that out. Wow. So I was walking through there with grace anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. 
because most people, yeah. you know, they don't hide it from there. You and know. so, so you you obviously got into that that at that lifestyle, but you actually learned ha- learned something about like a talent you had by braiding your daughter's hair. You said, yeah. So one day, um, <laughs> it's funny now, but it hurt me so bad. <laughs> This, um, uh, okay, so like I said, I was a single father out there in LA at this time. My daughter was about five or six. And um, I think I was going on a, 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 a casting interview or something. I mean, a, a, a audition. And I needed somebody to watch my child. So I asked one of my friends, hey, can you babysit for me? I'll be right back. And I just get, can you do your hair? Do her hair for me while I'm gone. Okay, so you know, this is a natural hair black child. Mm-hmm. Okay, I come back, my baby hair is straight as a, like it. I was blown away. I said, Oh my god, did you press her hair? Like, I thought she put some heat to it, flat iron it, or nothing. She said, No, I put a relaxer on it. Oh, that devastated me. <laughs> I was so hurt. I was so hurt. I felt like I let my daughter down. Like, I just like I said, I committed the ultimate sin. <laughs> <laughs> I prayed and I, I cried. Like I really cried. I prayed and said, God, please teach me how to do this baby hair because I don't want to feel, I don't want to, you know, give my daughter over to somebody that's going to take advantage of her in any type of way. Mm-hmm. So that was my prayer. I had a dream that was so vivid. Maybe that night or a couple of nights. It was so vivid, it was like a tutorial. I zoomed in, I was back a bit. I saw the beginning, it's slow mode for me, then it sped up. I'm like, oh my God, I woke up the next morning. I said, baby, let me do your hair. Let me see if daddy can do this. So that's what happened. Wow. <laughs> that's, yep. that's, um, you know, as, as, and that's, there's a lot of things too, like where girls need their mom, you know, or yeah. boys need their dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. this is one of those situations where, you know, normally as a guy, it's you're going, fuck, how do I do this? So, and, yeah. uh, you know, you actually came and ran with that. And uh, yeah. well, I'll just right say here. parents need their parents need kids, need their parents because yeah, boys need parents. their boys need mom, boys need mothers and mothers and girls need father, father figures. So everybody um, needs everyone, especially yeah. in the family. That's how you mm-hmm. create cohesion, um, communication and stuff like that. So when I had my daughter, her mom and I, I don't know, I wanted to be, I, look, I didn't want to be a separate house with my child. That was like, no, I don't want to do what my parents did, but it happened anyway. So um, at that time, she was going through some things and I went and was like, let me go get my baby. I think I was living in New Jersey at the time too. Mm. Yeah. So that's so. The- and then, so you got sole custody of her? Is that? Well, yeah, during that moment. She's 27 now. She's about to be 28 in March. Wow. So oh, that was. Yeah. That, that was, was a long time ago. That was a 21 years ago, you said? Uh, no, probably. Yeah, it's about maybe up about 21, 22 years. Jeez. Wow. And she said, you said she went, she's going, she went to college and, she, uh, and she's. She's, going well, to she's a poet now. She's been to college. She works. Oh, nice. Um, she's a poet. She does spoken word. She's a hostess. Um, wow. I'm so proud of that girl. She, and like I said, this is part of my motivation. Like, I went down to Georgia one time. Um, she was about 15. Took her with me down to Georgia to live. I get down there, and don't nobody know us. Nobody knows me. None of that. I have a fresh start. Clean slate. I get down there. I got on all this blue. I got on blue rags. I got on my yellow. You know, I'm out there posted, you know, with the stance, but I'm actually Gang banged uh, up. <laughs> man, listen, I'm also passing out flyers, letting people know that I do hair. And I got my daughter standing next to me. I see all these people with red on. So I'm trying to like, you know, like these niggas ain't finna. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole new city. Don't nobody know me. And I'm going to come to their territory and try to take over like they get now. So. Well, it's, it's kind of funny. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What are you going to say? I was just going to say, it's kind of funny because, you know, you're going out there. You're, you're wearing you're wearing blue. You're standing yeah. out there on the street. And you're passing out hair, hair, pro, hair, hair, uh, 
uh, right. pamphlets. Like you're yeah. like, I'm gonna come out and do your hair. So he's like, yeah. Yeah, like, what's, yeah, what's your problem? Yeah, I'm gonna, what, the your, what the hell's your what the hell's your problem? You're like, hey, here's, here's a flyer. <laughs> yeah. So I right. keep going. So what, what happened? So look, and then now now check this out. That is that I had an epiphany. It was like maybe a couple of days later, I started noticing that everybody that I had on red was wearing Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> or they was wearing uh, what's the other the Hawks, uh, the, Hawks. Like the Hawks, or the Braves? They all have red, red. in their mm-hmm. in their colors. So <laughs> I'm looking like I feel so stupid right now. <laughs> I'm out here trying to gangbang on these people. Don't know who the hell I am. And then I got my daughter out here too. And guess what? This is part of the reason why my brother got killed. I'm displaying myself, but they don't see them. Yeah, you feel me? So wow. that's what happened, man. I, it 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 made me think like, no, I can't do this to my child. Wow. So I started changing the way I dressed, changing my environment, the type of people I hung around. Um, while I was passing out flyers um, in a Walmart out there in Latonia, um, one of the uh, the uh, beauticians came out of the salon and let me know I couldn't pass flyers out around there because they already had a salon inside the Walmart. So I basically was loitering and, you know, (laughs) trying to take business from the the salon. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't know it was a salon in there though. I was just passing off flyers. So she said, but what you could though, she looked at my work. She said, you did this? I said, yeah. She said, okay, you looking for uh, work? I said, yes. I mean, like I'm trying to get, trying to do this. And um, she was like, well, what you could do is come in tomorrow morning and you can be my assistant. I'll teach you braid downs, everything about hair. Like, do you know how to do hair? I was like, man, I don't know how to do is braid. She said, well, I need an assistant. I need somebody to braid down for my sew ins. I'll pay you well. And I'm going to train you on everything color, cut, styling, curling. Wow. What you did. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> so it changed my, it changed my perspective. It changed my, mindset on who I am, my word, my value, like, you know, how far I can go with this. It gave me, it gave me hope, you know, it made me something, it gave me something to believe in. And that was myself. You know, I never at that before that really believed in myself, but she saw something in me that I had to look at myself and was like, dang, I'm talking about this woman was a former celebrity stylist. So she introduced me to all her stylist friends that, that do celebrities here in Atlanta. I bumped the rib shoulders with um, Akon. Like I used to work at Akon Salon down there. I used to work at Patrice. Um, she owns like a franchise of sewing salons down there called uh, Touched by an Angel. I worked at almost like all of them. I mean. And it's all some, women. <laughs> yes. And I've done some great things. Um doing this i was also invited by posting my work i was invited and flown out to boston to be a featured hairstylist in one of the salons out there um also in north carolina i worked at dallas at a salon um ohio uh, milwaukee la so yeah, yeah. that's pretty around. interesting it's kind of funny though like you were saying like you're you're thinking they're all wearing red and you're getting all worried about it when it's it's not mainly just the sports teams. Yeah. And and then you and then you 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 get the only person you have any any beef with is the salon owner in the place that you- and she actually <laughs> hires you. <laughs> so, but did you did you make the decision to to change your look before she saw you? Uh yeah. before she, I, do you- I, well, I was in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. I was in the thought process. Okay. But it hadn't actually happened yet because that was all the clothes that I had at the time. The, you wow. Know. <laughs> all the blue. <laughs> so she just saw you and said, okay, this person is obviously out here and you're not, you know, maybe she realized, you know, what, you know, obviously, because depending on who, where you're at, you can, you can tell what kind of clothes you're wearing and kind of what it represents. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't like gang banged out, but I'm just saying I had the colors on and yeah. flags and all that type of stuff. I'm always, I always look dressed pretty decent. Yeah, right. But but despite all that, she said, "You know what?" And maybe maybe because of it, she maybe she said, "You know what? This person is trying to do something for themselves." Yeah. 
even though I can see where they may have come from, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and she gave you a chance and that's, that's, and, and uh, how long were you working with her? Well, so she and I, she is like a really good friend of mine right now. She's my mentor. She's the one that really like paved the way for me. So I give her all honor and homage. Um, we still communicate with each other, not as often as we used to, but I initially started working for her. And I think that lasted maybe four or five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's off and on about four or five years. Man, um, uh, that's pretty, pretty. And all it takes is that one person just to give you that chance. You know, it's just a question yes, of when, you know? Yes, yes but, sir. Yes. But you also have to take the chance to self to yourself to put yourself out there so that someone can see you to give you that chance. True. If you wouldn't Absolutely. have been out there doing that, regardless of how you were dressed or what you were doing. Right. You know, you wouldn't have had that opportunity because she would have never saw you. You're standing in front of the, and it's, it's, it's a term called serendipity. Mm. And serendipity basically means, uh, let me look up. I like looking up a definition with today. So yeah, I mean, like, like it was word. meant to no, be no, or something no. kind of. Yeah. Serendipity basically is the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. A mm. fortunate stroke of serendipity because you were out there in front. If you would have been out in any front other salon, 99% chance that no one would have come out and said, hey, I need some help. They, a lot of times they might've said, you know, get the hell out of here, you know, or, yeah. or not even paid attention to how your daughter's hair looked or what, but this person, this one person that you happen to meet uh, yeah. at, in a shopping center, you know, uh, decided, you know, Hey, uh, you know, they saw what you did, but recognized that you had some talent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and instead of saying, Oh, I don't care about the talent. You're, you're trying to, you know, s- step on our, uh, on our sales whatever she actually opened her arms and offered that to you and gave you that opportunity but it would never have happened if you if it would it's just chance basically is it is it fate or is it is i would say fate yeah i would say fate fate is something you really can't avoid i don't think you can avoid fate it's gonna happen yeah anyway you can try for some things but whatever's gonna happen is in god's will it's already you know right it's in the blueprint of, of your life right yeah. Yeah. And I just thank God that right now. Oh, oh yeah. This is what I also wanted to mention. So since that time I've given, getting, I've been getting these like visions and uh, um, voices in my head. Not like I'm hearing things like that, but, <laughs> right. <laughs> but encouraging voices, encouraging thoughts in my head about changing. Since I changed my image, why not change the name of the set yeah that's a bold move i'm gonna change my my whole hood name who am i right who am I? <laughs> so wait changing watts mafia crypt to something new oh hello did he drop out let's see hold on man oh, he's still here Let's see. Give him a second. Maybe he'll. Yeah, dropped out. Some something. Uh... Hello. Oh yeah, there, oh, there you, you go. go. Cool. All right. Cool. Anyway, what were you saying now? Changing the name of your set. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so explain so, that. Huh? Explain that. That'd be interesting. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm more than glad to do so. <laughs> <laughs> so look, um, the idea behind it, if I, if God blessed me with the mind. And the opportunities to change, you know, that's an that's a door open for other people to come in behind me, right? You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, with changing the man who I am from a Watts Mafia Crip gangster or whatever, how about I change it to a wise man creating greatness? Oh, <laughs> so that's what WMC would stand for instead of Watts Mafia yeah, Crip. You hear me? Ah. So God gave me that and I am going to use it. So I've been putting together a business plan for a cleaning service called 99 Ways Moving Cleaning LLC. Um, also, Wise Men Create Greatness is going to be the umbrella that everything else falls under because I have ideas for like um, some kind of community center for you know kids. Um, 
I need some something for men, opportunities for men, like some kind of growth and development as far as uh, uh, teaching them skills. Um, if they need education, they need their high school diploma or GED, you know, um, offer them that. Uh, if they need legal services, we have people on our teams to do stuff like that. Um, like there's different ideas. It's 99 ways of it. You know, 99th Street, right? Uh, oh, see, this is now, now you're explaining that, that explains the wise man thing. Cause I was like, why is yes. he going by wise man? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm a wise man. Ah. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> And you, and you and take, since, you, since, since they're all in my in my group with me, we're all wise men. Right. Yeah. Right. I like the idea of you uh, focusing. Not that they're you know obviously focusing on uh, everyone is is like we talked before, but focusing on men, especially young men right now. It's just mm -hmm. really there's no direction, and then it seems mm -hmm. like there's it's from everywhere we're getting just ripped up, you know. And uh, right. like I've we even are. seen some stuff on online where you know, you know, like where, where they're like, oh, you like, let me rephrase what I'm trying to say here, but like, like you can even do things like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in that, those communities who, oh, I'm not going to do hair. I'm, a, I'm not going to do some, some I'm not going right. to braid hair. Ooh, I mean, I'm not, hey, you know. Go ahead, go ahead. Let me yeah. go. You know, like I'm, I'm not, that's not a manly thing to do or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, mm -hmm. but you actually, it actually sa saved you uh, in terms of, it made you the, Part of, part of the reason why you're the wise man that you are is because you took a talent you had and said, hey, I like doing this mm -hmm. and I'm not going to let let all the social bullshit get in the way of me doing it. And now, mm -hmm. now you, you're where you are right now. Yep. And, so. and you know, since then, because I, 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 I you know, what? initially I feel like people gonna look at me like funny. But the game bank side of me said, man, I don't give a fuck, fuck what they talking about. I don't care. Now I'm going to make this money. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I'm about to get this bread because every head that I do on a woman, they're paying on average 50 to a hundred dollars. That's small, small styles. Mm -hmm. Right. Know. I just did a head of wicks. I don't know if you guys don't know what wicks are, but they're um, those fat locks that people are starting to style out now. Mm -hmm. The big fat thick ones, they're called wicks. So I did a session of wicks. I charged $600 for a session of wicks. Damn. And one day I made $600. I could have paid, I could have charged 12 for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So why wouldn't I do somebody's hair? <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, if it's working you know for I mean? you. Yeah, so I don't care what they say about me with my sexuality. People know I get women. Pretty women. Well, well that's the thing. That's, that, that you must. <laughs> if, yeah, that's if, you can do, if you can do a woman's hair, it's almost like you uh, you got a like a leg up on already on anybody else. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And guess what I decided to do? I went to school. They taught me how to do fingernails, pedicures, oh, facials, geez. makeup, all of it. Aesthetics. Oh. I'm doing massages. So come on, man. This is this is a very lucrative opportunity for me. And I think it's a door open. It's an opportunity for me to open a door because since I started, that stigma of there this being a feminine industry went out the door, not just with me, but there's other straight men that do hair. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a lot of this i didn't know <laughs> right well we always stereotype you know oh you gotta be a gay dude if you're in that field you know mm -hmm. no. so and the way that i carry myself i carry myself with poise i'm very respectful integral you know i don't um i don't sleep with my clients that's 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 a no-no because it, it it messes up business it gives you a bad name in the industry right you know um how can i get a client to tell somebody else to come see me and she's mad at me because I ain't given her none the other day. <laughs> or something else, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. I, I don't cross my business with pleasure at all. That's If you're a client of mine, we cannot do that. We're, we're That's it. We may yeah. be flirtatious. And, you know, I think about it, but I can't do that. Or, uh, yeah, you can, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we might be able to get together, but, you, but, uh, but you'll be getting your hair done by so and so instead from now on. <laughs> right. I won't be your hair, right. hair person anymore. Right. Yeah. Or well, I just don't do anything at all with any of them. Yep. <laughs> that's right. that's probably that's a good. Called, it's called willpower, which is a which yeah. is another thing that a lot of people don't, especially young men today or any men. You got just this desperate need to to get, you know, like what do mm -hmm. they call it? the well, women call I guess it's the body count thing now. Yeah. Well, I know it's been around for a while, but but it's really really bad where where you know how many people you can get with and you know, and, and people mm -hmm. would take advantage of that. 
in some ways. Now but, they're crossing sexuality. So how many bodies can I get over here? Yeah. Yep. That's ridiculous, man. This world is just this is falling apart right before our eyes. Oh man. Yeah. You got that right. I bet I bet you are are so relieved that your daughter is 27 and not and not, <laughs> not six 15 right now. or something yeah i mean because <laughs> right because raising a kid like today uh, like oh <laughs> i couldn't even imagine very hard yeah. to raise one if you haven't if you haven't started from the beginning mm-hmm. teaching them uh some type of found foundational thought process Mm-hmm. giving them something to stand on as far as the spirituality their humanity as you know um teaching them self-worth uh, that they had they bring value and that they are valuable to be honorable and respectful to other people to be kind stern and assertive those things have to be instilled even in the day of conception all this has to start from the beginning like the way my mind is right now I, I, I'm surprised that I haven't morphed into some other kind of creature yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Wow. I feel like sometimes I'm living in two different, I'm living in two different, I have two different lives. Like when I'm, when I'm awake right now, I'm dreaming in my other life. Hmm. When I go to sleep here, I'm awake there. I really do feel like I, I, there's, I live somewhere else. It's interesting. It's so like a parallel double, life, huh? Yeah, I swear. I promise you. I, I, I hope I don't sound crazy, but yeah. I honestly feel like, like, okay, every time I wake up to go to work or whatever activity I do here, it's like, this is not enough. Hmm. It's more to just waking up and doing the next activity or staying in routine. This is, it doesn't feel complete. Like I should be living bigger, better, or maybe I am. And I had to create another, I don't know. This is weird to me. Like I'm in another portal or dimension somewhere living the part of life that I felt like, okay, yeah, now I feel good. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like, oh God, back here again. <laughs> <laughs> like shit. So you actually like the other life better almost, huh? Yeah, but I don't know what life that is. <laughs> you, got, you can't remember your dreams most of the time, or a lot of times you're like, oh shit, that felt great. <laughs> well, I think a lot of that, like you said, is the world is falling apart and uh, spirituality yeah. is not really something that people care as much about anymore. And I'm not talking about any specific religion. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting, because I, I, my family is Catholic and I went to church with my mom for the first time in like 20 years. Mm. and it was just really emotional just because there's a connection there it doesn't matter and whether you believe in yeah. that that god or a specific entity like i said there's just a connection mm-hmm. in the community of, of people who just you know um mm-hmm. it was moving i'm not gonna lie i i was like a couple of tears Got a little emotional huh yeah i i completely understand because um uh, i was raised christian my dad is a pastor right now he's a bishop he travels the world preaching and stuff like that i'm proud of him um, but I went a different route due to the fact that I felt like I needed more discipline in my day-to-day life mm-hmm. or some type of way to guide me towards doing everything the right way, the right, right way, you know? So I chose Islam um, because we're taught to pray five times a day. One of the pillars of Islam is prayer. Another pillar is uh, charity, you know? give and share with other people other pillars um of course you have to learn the word and study you got to mm-hmm. make hives you got to go down go pilgrimage you got to go to mecca at some point and then there's a fifth one that i have to learn and see i have to get even more on my dean with that but the closer you are to god it's hard for you to do any sinful things like if you pray five times a day you got to ask for forgiveness five times a day. So what's the purpose of doing anything outside of that? Just get on your knees and thank God for right. every moment of breath, every piece of mm-hmm. time that you can spend with people you care about. Like life is serious, man. When I got spared in 98, it changed. Like I wild out at first. I try to respond like normal, you know, supposedly normal people. Oh, I'm going to get revenge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, 
<laughs> but that didn't make it didn't make sense to my logical thought process. Like, what would that do to the next person? Yeah, right. Or it's even to be you. a domino effect. So I I I kind of like went a little bit ballistic, started smoking Shern real bad, just because he got killed in my face. Yeah, Saving you saw it happen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Saving my life. You know, and that happened in 1998, and I rarely talk about it. Mm. Wow. But I know why I'm here. I don't wear it on the sh- on my shoulders as woe is me. No, I live with purpose because obviously I'm here for a reason. Right, right. You know. Well, you know the. Um, oh, sorry to cut you off, man. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and you know, I know there's a big uh, stereotype with with Islam and the Muslim religion. It's mm-hmm. not the people that blow themselves up for Allah. That's not mm-hmm. what you know. It, it's a big misconception in a lot of cases. Yes, that's jihadists. Those are jihadists. Those more than likely are people that are planted to make religion look like yeah. it is, you know, for the world to be. Re- to, listen, man, we are we're controlled. Well, the the world is in mm-hmm. control by a small amount of people. You got eight billion, and maybe point one percent of them control, or yep. Yep. You know, I would say one percent. But however. With that amount of power, we to them are nothing but ants. We're like ant farms. They yep. put us where they want us to put us. They feed us what they want us to feed us. They shake it all, all up. They shake the jar up. Now they committed. I mean, they they cause some type of conflict to distract you from what's really going on over here. That is so true, man. Yep. So yep. while while we're while we're talking about jihadists blowing up over there, they're hiding the fact that. They're stealing all the gold from other countries. They're hiding the fact that all the oil does not belong to the United States. And they're buy, they're buying they're buying all the farmland up and all the houses, yes. which is another yes. thing that's probably happening in in lots as well. Is that like I said, they're buying all the houses so that people rent. Yes. Um, and there's there's a there's a term out there um, by the head of the WEF, and it's uh, it's Claus, whatever his name is. I don't know if you know who he is, but. It's, it's you will own nothing and you will be happy. Mm-hmm. Yep, I've heard that actually. Yeah. Own and, nothing and yeah, you, you will be own, happy. And you will be happy. Wow. Um, but I think a lot of people are waking up. Like if there's, there was a th- thing going on in Michigan where um, some schools, Michigan has, Michigan has a lar- very large uh, Muslim community. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a school issue where there was pornography in school. They were teaching sexuality in schools. Mm-hmm. And, and guess what happened? The, the Muslims and the Christians and all the other people that were actually, you know, more religious or more, you know, mm-hmm. centered on values, they, they didn't go, oh, well, we're not going to support each other. You're mu-. They, were, we were, they were all united because it was something mm-hmm. that was a common spiritual thing. Like, you know, you, you protect yes. your kids, you know. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. so that's the kind of stuff that we can look for as hope. But like, yeah, the world is, uh, yeah, <laughs> you got it. You got it. Me- yeah. Let, let me get put a little bit more on that, um, the Muslim thing. All three, the three religions, they all believe in one God, the same God, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. They believe in the same. They have the Torah, the, the Quran, and the Bible. Hmm. The Torah is basically the first five books of the Bible. They're written by uh, Moses. So from those, those books, that's where the Jew, Jew, Jews... They get their uh, doctrine from. They get their support of their religion from. Islam is based on the Quran, but it is a supporter of the Bible. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. All the prophets that are mentioned in the Bible are in the Quran, from Moses to Jesus to John to Peter. We don't like Paul so much. (laughs) (laughs) But But yeah, that's interesting. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff that's borrowed from the Quran. Well, it's, just, it's well, not, not really borrowed. No. I would say mutual. It's not borrowed. Yeah, it's mutual. It's from mutual. the same right. source. Gotcha. And, and this is the thing. So when this this is um was 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 the, from my understanding of of what I've been taught from Islam, and even from what I learned before I even became Muslim, um, that the Prophet Muhammad was basically given a message. For the people, 
And that's the whole world. When Jesus came, Jesus came only for specific people. So he said, when I leave, you can't come with me. But when I leave, I shall give you a Holy Spirit. He will guide you. And that's what the prophet Muhammad did. He came as a guidance to how to get back to that Bible you're supposed to be into. Mm -hmm. hmm. So oh. the Quran is basically, like I said, a supporter of the Bible. It's a description. It's, it's like it, it describes the the. the the creation describes the communication or the relationship of God and man. So, man. like I said, you got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau. You got Solomon, Joseph, the whole 12 tribes are mentioned. Ruth, Miriam, Mary. These people are all in the Quran. We believe and we know who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. We know this. Right, right. Hmm. Man, but crazy. we don't worship him as God. We do not worship Prophet Muhammad as God. We worship God as God. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because you're right. A lot of times they do. They look at the prophets as the um, as the actual God. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yep. So that's where it comes from. So I just want to make that clear. Um, Islam yeah. is is supposed to be a religion of peace. It's not a, a jihad. When a jihad basically is a term that means you're fighting to protect what you believe, but not to go out and start a war. No, right. That's not jihad. Hmm. That's that jihad. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, because you know it, it always it kind of has a bad connotation to it. When a lot of people yeah. you'll say you know oh they're Muslim oh, oh they're Muslim oh they're one right. of those you know so yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's well, that's just like the radicals. Okay, so you have the radical Muslims, like those are blowing themselves up. Those are like extremists. They are way out there. Then you have here, like the brothers, the brothers here in America. Um, the nation of Islam is different from Islam. You got Sunnis and you got Shiites, and there's other sects. But the nation of Islam does not um, represent all of Islam. Mm -hmm. Just like those jihadists over there ah. don't represent all of Islam. There's different sects of Islam. And the whole, the, 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 it's just like Christianity as a whole. You have the KKK members, they believe that what they, they, they go to church too. That's true. That's yeah, true. That's, that's true. That's true. Okay. They go to church and they baptize, they believe, they speak in tongues, they, they shout, they do all that. They do the same thing. So right. we can't, take the whole religion and say all oh, y'all bad because one group of yep. group of people yep west Baptist, west baptists are another church that we're that are bad shit a little bit so mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they blow up that small bit of people throw you a distraction real quick trip you and then catch you before you hit the bed of nails and lay you down real soft on right Mm -hmm. Most to take your focus off. Uh, yeah, and then you're fighting each other instead of fighting the people that are that are that are controlling the ant farm. Yes, and the same thing that I'm telling you that I said in 1998. I've been talking like this a whole life. <laughs> so, so this has been a thing for you to to like kind of yeah. pro prophesy. Maybe you're the next prophet. I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I can only do what God tells me to do. That's my whole goal from now on is to follow the the laws of God to follow. His guidance in any type of way. I may make mistakes because I'm a human. You right. know, um, I, I have my own vices sometimes. I smoke weed. I go and get me a fifth of E and J and go crazy on that bad boy. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> we're not but mad at that. <laughs> I'm, I'm to myself. I don't go out. You know, I don't go out on a drunk, belligerent. You know, I people don't even know that I'm tipsy. Mm -hmm. I be so smooth. I'm chilled out. You know, now there's another side to it. You get me upset. Oh yeah, I'm going. To <laughs> <laughs> a sleeping, sleeping bull right there, right? Yeah, so, but I, I, I was blessed with, really, I was blessed with, with grace, man, to be alive. So every opportunity to me is an opportunity for correction. Even whatever I did was already good. I still have to make it better, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody else would need to know it. Like, I'm not perfect, man. I don't claim to be. I'm not sitting up here like I'm a goody two-shoot. I still talk bad about people behind their back or in their face. Mm -hmm. I laugh so I at the same mistakes as happens. Any other human. You know? No. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, 
I'm not any different. Like I, but, I, but I the, breathe the same air. I'm weighed down by the same gravity. But the yep. thing is, you're trying to grow. You're trying to improve yourself as a person, and that's all you can really do as a human being at all. Is right. Really just try yeah. to improve what you know you need to work on. And if you don't do that, then that's where everything goes. But if you at least, you know, part one of the first things you got to do is try. So absolutely. Um, I'm question for well, actually. What, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, a little bit about, like you said, you've got some stuff going on. Are you're still doing doing hair, obviously, and nails, and now and everything else. But you've got mm -hmm. the wise man um, creative. You said creates. Yeah, wise, wise man creative. creates, and that's that's what you're working on. What else are you working on, and where can people get in touch with you to to network with you or disconnect if they need to or want or want to if you want them to? Okay, well, um, I'm also working. I have my own salon suite in Milwaukee here and um, I'm looking to build clientele but I work third shift too at another job so right now I'm just um, working on putting a business plan together for my cleaning service and nice. my salon uh, ideas that I have for my salon but I'm gonna work on the cleaning service first right now but if somebody wants to you know find me or whatever they can go on Facebook on Wise Men just look me Two up words. Yeah. Wise man. That's yep. it. W I S E M A N on nice. Facebook. Let me see. Instagram. I think it's the same thing on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've uh, kind of reinvented yourself since we talked yeah. to you last, basically. Yes, sir. Yes. Wow. yes. It's a life I process, mean, though. That's what you do most of. You got a continual reinvention. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Man. Well, Curtis. AKA Youssef. <laughs> Th thanks for joining us, man. This has been uh, very enlightening for sure. And I like it Thank because you. it's a positive. A lot of times we have a lot of people on, um, you know, who are talking about all the stuff that's, that's going on in the world, but the, the what, you know, what, and obviously we know that the world is, is kind of broken and, mm -hmm. at least, you know, but there's people that are out there that want to make better for themselves and other people. And, uh, and again, going from you know, the fact that you, you know, that, that woman gave you a chance when you were looking for, for something new, it also yeah. gives you the opportunity to, you know, say, Hey, if she can do that, I can do that as well. So it's really nice to have a positive, uh, uh upbeat interview before the new year. Yeah. I think it's a good thing yeah. for everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Starting Thank off you. the new year with some positivity, you know, so that's, mm -hmm. that's we need good. more of that. So, that's wow. <laughs> okay. So look, let me finish. Let me tell you what Yusuf means. Okay. okay. In case you don't know, of course, we know Allah means God, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So Yusuf basically means God increases. Oh. And he gave me that name years ago. And I was like, man, Yusuf, why would I tell people my name is Yusuf? I never knew the, the definition or meaning of it until like maybe a couple of years ago. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I am a Yusuf because I started use, looking at things that I've done with other people or even for myself and i've always been able to like almost feel it's you know how they say the word whatever it touches turns to gold type stuff oh yeah, yeah. It, it scares me a little bit <laughs> but <laughs> i'm walking in that now i'm walking in it now well you've also had had the, had the lowest of lows in terms of where you've been in, in terms of seeing your brother go through you know and everything else with that so sometimes yeah. turn up you know serendipity man <laughs> yes, sir. Yep. Wow. All right. Well, we'll we'll get to uh, stick stick on with us for a second. We're gonna, we'll wrap. We're this gonna up. close this up. Yep. Yep. And and uh, okay. we'll we'll see you. In a, we'll we'll see you all. Uh, this is what is what the date? It's the 29th right? Yeah. Yeah. It will, this will go up on the thirtieth, probably. I'm guessing, right? Oh, actually, I'll be out of town. I'm I'm gonna try to get up tonight, so you might, you oh. might have this evening. So okay, okay, cool. Because uh, cool, I got cool. I'm doing New Year's stuff. Uh, talking about that uh, that. Uh, party little bit party thing i'm probably gonna go out and have a little fun before the new year and then kind of nice. set myself yeah. straight but uh well, but this is a great positive positive meeting uh, outlook for this and uh once again this has been curtis kelly or yusuf the wise yusuf man Allah. Yusuf Allah, the wise man <laughs> yep uh, and yeah. i am cruise control and i'm maxwell silverhammer and that's the story there, there bitches, bitches. See ya. <laughs>
We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. With Maxwell Silverham. We are nothing sacred. With cruise control. We are nothing sacred. sacred.